15th, 2021. I'm within the system. Um, I, this morning, on my way home from school with my son, uh, Anthony, is what I call him, um, he, uh, I, I took a, um, video of one of the trees, um, as I was walking home, though, I, I looked down 45th Avenue, excuse me, by the Roman numeral 3, or the 111th Precinct, um, on 45th, they have a row of these trees, um, and there, I believe it's, it's no hair bald pattern is what they call it, um, in Arborvitae, but I'm not 100% certain. I think that's what they call it. Um, that's what I would call an out-of-body experience knowledge. It's not like, um, everyday street talk. It's just knowing things in your spirit from time spent in what we call the great beyond, um, which I don't know how that happens or whatever. It's not my purpose. Um, but while I'm here and trapped, um, the no hair balding pattern goes into an actual star, um, knowing that's named for the same thing. I got confirmation that humans are using that, which is called a, a no hair bald black hole, um, which is currently where I think the dome is, which is why I'm having so many problems between magnetics and electric and the lights, the visible light spectrum um, and health issues, especially in this area. I had electrocution, uh, coming through, um, in Patchogue as well. Um, there was a, a problem with my legs, um, showing signs of electrode, uh, but I wasn't hooked up to any machines or anything. Just the skin started showing signs of um, electrolysis, high levels of elect electric whatever being absorbed or conducted by my body. Not that it, I wanted, not that I wanted it, it just it happened. But anyway, long story short is, uh, so I did that video this morning about just the tree. The tree is the same color schematic as when um, I've seen... They're not here all the time, but sometimes they pass through. Th they come in what I call cat's pajamas, just because it's m the color of the no hair bald pattern tree bark, tree with bark and without bark, um, in this area. And I'm cat arusa, so I call them cat's pa pajamas, because I'm in a jam, and they're the patriarchs, um, and on their uniform, they write in the 26 alphabet characters that I'm able to read, um, or, or cognitively recognize as U dot S dot, and then it says army, A-R-M-Y, but their color pattern is, um, the no bald the no hair balding pattern of the local trees on their their special I, I've heard it referred to as combat C-O-M-B-A-T um, I don't know other than that I only have my local um, build of word for concept to try to communicate in some form of English um, so that happened. There's a pair there. So I was, uh, there's a, a gentleman that I pass on my way towards Bell Boulevard today. He crossed the street and came to my side of the, the, um, street, which was nice. We stopped and we actually chat, um, 
we were talking about dogs, D-O-G-S. I told him that I had met a man once who had a Newfoundland with this big head and he had this Jeep, the kind that has the convertible like that comes off and then it's open and exposed, but he had it on. And so you're in this like tight compartment and the dog was in the back seat, but its head came right through and it just drooled all over you. I was like, when you have to like drive with a dish towel, just so this way the girl in the passenger seat doesn't get grossed out. I mean, it's one thing, I, and then I even said to Kevin, I was like, you know, I'm a mom. So you put a burp, you put a, a burp cloth on and then you burp the babies so they don't throw up all over you, God forbid. I was like, oh, that I'm used to. But what I'm not used to is putting that on your shoulder for a dog. So we kind of just, you know, um, mildly laughed about that with larger dogs that can drool. Um, what I did not mention to him is my favorite dog out of all of the two people that I knew with dogs, let's say. Um, actually, three. Uh, Blue, who was a blue, special blue color pit bull, was my favorite dog of a very special person. Um, that dog was so well trained and so obedient and it didn't drool necessarily all over you. So it was very nice because it would come up and then it would go away. Perfect dog. Um, but I did not mention that to Kevin. I only mentioned the Newfoundland for whatever. One had a, uh, bald head. And the other owner had hair. Just saying. And on Roy Court was where Newfoundland was, for some reason. Around the Hofstra time. And I took a class with him about Excel spreadsheets. Because I wasn't going to take any computer classes. I mean, I didn't think I needed them. I was trying to find more the niche that I was going... like career development's what I wanted, but instead I got computer skills, basic computer skills, and that's where Neil was, N-E-I-L, he had that big black Newfoundland and a Jeep, and he lived on Roy Court, R-O-Y, um, and that is about it on that. It's star one nine seven eight star eight three seven eight Nicole Cataruza. Oh, and the other thing I mentioned to Kevin is um, that I had list. I was. I said I used to be a real estate agent, and after Sandy, um, there was which was like a major flood around here. There were houses that were devastated. There was a homeowner in Massapequa. I went to go look at the house to do an evaluation because they were thinking of short sailing, and in the house was a, a live animal. Was a dog. Um, and it was a, I think it was a Cocker Spaniel or something. And so it was like, well, what are you doing with the, you know, there's a live, you can't just leave the dog in there. I mean, it smells, it's f like fecal matter all over itself. So like, well, what do you, would you mind like, you know, taking it to the shelter? Cause they were down in Florida. And I'm like, uh, I was like, well, yeah, I do. But I mean, like, do you have anybody else? I mean, it's not even my listing yet. And now it's like, so I went uh, to the house, I got the dog, I put it in my, my car, and I was looking for shelters, but it was after hours, and the dog smelled so rancid, and I had to bring it back to my home, so this way, first thing in the morning, I could bring it to the shelter. So I brought it back towards Patchog, and the groomer in town, um, they, at first had a problem with the shots and vaccines with not taking. And I was like, well, it's kind of, it's a rescue. I was like, is there anything you could do for that? I was like, I'll pay for the service. I mean, I didn't want to pay for that, but it, I mean, I'll pay for it because I have to have, I have children and I, it just, I'm afraid I just, it needs to be washed and cleaned. And, um, 
whatever. So the shelter called me back, uh, I'm sorry, the groomer called me back, said that they would take the dog um, and groom it for that purpose since it is a rescue, which I greatly appreciated. Um, and then I took the dog home for the night and put it blocked into the bathroom because I had young kids and I was afraid of it. it I mean, the dog was... You know, it was left neglected and abused, and then it bit, the, like, it kind of went at your hand every now and again. It was unpredictable. So, um, and I, my, Nucci, my cat scratch, uh, was young, toddling around. I didn't want him to get bit. Um, so I told him that, and I'm like, I, you know, I couldn't, if I knew that I had a live animal in a house, I couldn't just leave it. I mean, I don't know how people are able to do those kinds of things. So, um, but they do. I know that. I've seen the ASPCA show with my children about some of the animal cruelty that humans are capable of. That's not alright. Um, star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Caterosa. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and I'm in Bayside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.